expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the staff or management of WENG, Viper Communications Incorporated, or its advertisers. You're listening to The Morning Magazine on WENG with me, KB, and Ken Kinsey. All right. Uh, this morning we're going to be chatting, as I said, with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Amendola. Uh, she is a, bug, uh, a Florida-based lung cancer specialist. And, and uh, let me just set this up for a second because a lot of folks are uh, each year more than – a lot of people die of lung cancer more than colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancers combined. And this, this is she works with a uh, because of these new advanced technologies. The first treatments that are in southeastern U.S. and one of many, only in five states nationwide to come up with this latest art of radiation treatment that's available to cancer patients. Dr. Amendola, thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time here on WENG. Tell us about uh, this this new procedure that you have uh, come up with or that you're working with these days. Uh, well, well, good morning again. We have uh, a procedure that is not a new procedure, but it's a much better and modified procedure. It's called radiosurgery. And what is important about it is that uh, over the years, the technology that is coming from the technology to manage brain tumors has evolved and treated tumors like lung and other sites that no, no, they're not fixed. They're tumors that move with respiration. And the fact that using a machine that can treat precisely the tumor and gait or follow the tumor with respiration and not only do it precisely to the target, but also non-invasive, in a single day, you can only take three days to treat a lung cancer, you can treat the patient with non-invasive technique as an outpatient with a very high local control. Up to 98% of patients with early, breast, early lung cancer can be cured. The machine that uh, we use is a technology called the EDGE, and the EDGE has developed over the years to become a more efficient. <clears throat> We've been working with uh, similar technology called the Trilogy, also from the Varian company, and also using a software that allows us to treat the patients in very short time because the key thing is not only localize the tumor with accurate imaging, it's also to treat the target at the right time so you don't miss because you're giving very high doses of radiation uh, to the tumor. One of the limitations of treating lung cancer in the past has been that we were not able to localize the tumor. So advances in imaging, CT, PET CT, MRI, everything has helped us to develop a technique paired with better software to be able to localize tumors and to target those tumors. This, I think, is important in this month that is the Lung Cancer Month, also because the fact that we've been approved to use lung screening in patients, like you would use for breast cancer screening, we will be able to detect lung cancer in an early phase. What happens with lung cancer is we don't cure lung cancer because we detect it too late and patients don't know, uh, families don't know, and patients, when they go to the doctor, the tumor is too advanced. And when it's too advanced, they don't get chemotherapy, they really don't even get to a radiation oncologist. So targeting the tumor in an early phase using non-invasive technologies like the EDGE, we can cure more, more patients and we can probably change the image and change the management of lung cancer. And I believe our specialty, radiation oncologists, it will be in the forefront of this, uh, you know, type of tumors. Yeah, before the before when people were diagnosed with lung cancer, it was they tried to basically, I guess, understand they they tried to treat the whole body or ended up treating the whole body versus this targeting that you're talking about because of these uh, uh, the new imaging, et cetera, that you can actually see the small tumor when it starts, particularly if you do the, the screenings and things like that. See, what happened is in the patients, like, let's say, a patient that's in great shape, like is an athletic patient, in good shape, a smoker more likely, this patient doesn't even have symptoms and goes for a preoperative uh, procedure, a hernia operation or whatever. They do a, an X-ray and they find a huge mass in the chest. When that happens, the tumor is too large. So radiation therapy, people do not want to use radiation therapy. What they do is start the patient in chemotherapy. But the time the patient gets six cycles of chemo, the tumor has progressed. Majority of the times what chemotherapy helps their body but it still doesn't do very much for the primary tumor, 
and radiation oncologists do not want to treat such a large volumes. And it's hard to target because you needed to treat it with, you know, before we just use techniques that in order to treat a tumor that it moves, you not only treat the tumor, but you need to be sure that it moves three centimeters, like almost an inch up and an inch below. You need to increase those field sizes, causing severe fibrosis of the lungs, and patients will be even worse. Some of those patients already have emphysema because they're smokers, so you, ha you have a lot of limitations being able to give a technology or, or treat those patients adequately. So with this technology, I treat patients even with very large tumors, and tumors in the center of the of the chest that is very hard to treat, avoiding normal structures like the trachea, the esophagus, because we can see and we can fusion like images like PET CT and CT, and, and if you are properly applying those patients, you can even do chemotherapy at the same time, and the results are much better. You can do systemic drugs for any cells that they have disseminated in the body, and you can go and target your tumors. And with this technology, we work together with, with the surgeons, and the thoracic surgeons can be there, you know, drawing and helping us to localize the tumor, making the patient feel more comfortable. That is like taking it out, but without taking it out. So it's a, it's a type of, of treatment that it, it will not require surgery, no anesthesia, so the risks are much, much less than going to, through anesthesia and to a procedure that it can cause, you know, complications. Is there, is there a, a good time to have a screening? Like, like say, say you think you may have something or you just want to find out that you don't have anything, you go get a screening. And then uh, let's say you're, you're clear at that point or you might have a little speck or something like that. Is there like a, an end of, like, like for breast yes. cancer screening? There, there, are, there are guidelines like breast cancer that we have guidelines. Patients should be 55 years of age uh, or, or more. They should have history of smoking, you know, uh, at least uh, 30 years or 15 years of smoking history. So anybody that has smoked in the past, you know, can go to the primary care physician and say, look, I would like to have my screening for lung cancer. And instead of going for a chest X-ray that is not as accurate as a CT, they will do a very fast scan that is a CT scan, a screening CT scan, it will be approved by Medicare at this current time and by all insurances. And it will be very fast, very low dose of radiation. And if there is a nodule, if a nodule is, you know, more likely could be a benign nodule, they will be following that nodule. But if that nodule is a little bit of a, you know, of let's say, uh, suggestive of lung cancer, they will proceed with PET-CT or with biopsy. And they can do a biopsy under CT guidance, or they can do a bronchoscopy. But the patient is diagnosed with an early cancer. So far, we have a standard of care for patients with a small tumors treated with radiosurgery versus surgery, because comparing surgery data with patients treated with radiosurgery alone for patients that were or too heavy or had too many diseases like cardiovascular or diabetes that they couldn't have surgery. We have hundreds of thousands of patients worldwide treated this manner and it's considered now a standard of care, radiosurgery for early cancer to be treated with radiosurgery alone with 95 to 98% survivals and local control. So this is a really good technique now currently in the world we are evaluating this technique, comparing with different techniques, with uh, let's say radio frequency, with surgery, and radio surgery for patients that are operable. You know, because that's the key thing. When you have a patient, let's say a 70 or a 60 or even an 80-year-old patient, you know, you may not want to go and take him to the emergency to the surgery with anesthesia, or you know, if a patient has a lot of cardiovascular problems. Those patients are perfect candidates, but now we wanted to extend that to patients that they're well fitted and they don't have to have surgery. If you can do something without surgery, you know, you can work with the surgeon along, but you, the patient is a, it's a patient procedure. There is very simple, no complications. I think this technique is uh, has been revolutionary and revolutionizing uh, the field of medicine. 
you see radio surgery like this in other uh, areas being able to be uh, successful as well? I mean, you're talking about lung cancer here, but I mean, let's say you have a um, uh, uh, a liver cancer or a oh, I do, I do it all the time. I treat patients with liver metastases uh, all the time, primary liver tumors. We use it in spine tumors. It's a fantastic technology. You know, if the patient has a tumor in the spine. You treat the spine, you do one treatment or you do three treatments. By the second treatment, the pain disappears. It's very focused. There is no side effects whatsoever. We treat kidney tumors. We treat, and the brain is well established because it's been done since the 50s. Because the brain is a very fixed box, you know, so people, you know, nothing moves in the brain, so it was very easy to do the brain. But when we start translating, I do pancreatic cancer. Patients with pancreatic cancer that people say these patients are not operable, they're, you know, we cannot do anything. No, you have to understand. Patients need to understand there is another technology available. People, doctors, and patients need to know that radiation therapy is a curative modality of treatment, and the new forms of given radiation therapy are excellent forms of, you know, curative manners of doing cancer treatment. But patients need to be aware because Many patients do not know that this exists. So unless primary care doctors or family members become aware, they don't know. You know, I get patients from all over that they go into the Internet or they see another patient of mine that has had the procedure, and we done sarcomas, all kinds of tumors that are even radio-resistant. People have the idea that renal tumors cannot be treated with radiation. We couldn't because we didn't have the capabilities before. Now we do because we have precision, we have high doses of radiation that only go to tumor and not to normal tissues. So there is no toxicity. Again, it's called a stereotactic radiosurgery. It's a non-invasive treatment technique used primarily to shrink tumors through a focused high-intensity beam of radiation. And uh, did you did, now you you've been doing this for for quite a while? Is that true, Doctor? It's Armand? true. I have been doing that since the '90s. I started with gamma knife uh, treating brain metastases, um, primary brain tumors, meningiomas, acoustic neuromas. We treat trigeminal neuralgias, and then after that, I developed the. I when we started doing the body, I got immediately involved with treating the body. I started following with CyberKnife in the early 2000 as, as it was developed and originated. And then we, in the 2008, we found a, a software that allowed us to do it with a linear accelerator. Uh, we, we call the rapid art. What it does is instead of giving you the treatment in like 15, 20, 45 minutes, it can develop, give you the radiation with one arc in less than two minutes. So we acquired the rapid arc. And we start applying it, and because I use a lot of radio surgery for the brain, I start using extracranial anywhere in the body. And when the age came to the market, I said, you know, we have to have this because this is going to be a major advancement in cancer therapy because it will allow us not only to treat anywhere in the body, but it will be focused, it will be faster, you know, the mobility of the table that it has, it can give you any position of the treatment. So... To me, so far, we have started and treated the first patient September 30, and we're doing extremely well. All the patients have done extremely well, and I hope, you know, continue to do that and make people aware, make doctors aware, because unfortunately, even, you know, years, like gamma knife, for example, is a technique that is used for many years. People on brain tumors, they still operate meningiomas. They still operate acoustic neuromas, and with edge, we can do the same that we did before with the other technology, we can do it anywhere in the body, in the spine, in the kidneys, in the liver, in the lung, anywhere. The only, and this is only being done in the Miami area, is that correct, or is there other places? The EDGE system is one of the, we have one of the 10 units in the world. The first one was in Lisbon, and I believe in Detroit and in Cleveland, the second and third. Our was the third unit that is the only one in the southeast area at the current time. And we are you know, very happy to have it. And someone out there who has this kind of thing or looking for this kind of treatment, how does one get a hold of you? Oh, they can call my, my phone number. is 305-669-6833. Or they can even look on the Internet at the Innovative Cancer Institute. Okay. Or even look at my name. I'm sure I'll pop out somewhere there. 
<laughs> and we'll be more than happy to see anybody. You know, and 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 if we if the patient is not eligible for that technique, you know, I'm sure that we can work up other technologies that we can use, because many times if the tumor is too large, I will use a combination of the com the conventional focus therapy with the edge as a as a you know as a boost or something like that. I, I um, we are kind of innovative in type of treatments that we offer. Dr. Amendola, thank you very much for joining us this morning. It's been quite enlightening and a new way to treat cancer. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back.